All right, guys, this is a special treat. You may know our next guest from being Floyd Mayweather security through the world tour that took over the world last week. Greg LaRosa, welcome to Submission Radio. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. No problem. No, no, we, we really appreciate your time. We know you're always busy and, uh, and you're obviously on call all the time. Tell us, where are you right now, Greg? I'm out in Las Vegas right now. I'm just on my, uh, I'm on my ranch. I just finished feeding my horses. Just woke up not too long ago from uh, late night training at the gym and uh, hanging out now. Oh, wow. So I guess that's something that fans didn't really know about you, that you've got a ranch and horses. I mean, I, I think I saw in an interview you said you live right near Floyd, so that you're on call any time. You can go up there any time. So is the ranch located near him, or is this uh, another property that you've got that you go visit? No, it's it, it's pretty close. I'm about five minutes from his house. I'm just uh, I'm just on the outskirts of Vegas. So mm. basically my backyard is like the entire – it's just like open desert and mountains and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. I'm not near anyone kind of my little escape from all the busy lifestyle you know what i'm saying so this is this this is my life here at home very nice and and just curious how many horses do you have and and, and why horses i feel like it's you, you got to be a particular person <laughs> to have horses right yeah yeah i i have three horses right now i'm looking to get another one i got uh, four dogs i love animals um i've always loved animals my dad had uh <clears throat> horses like race horses growing up and um and i've always started loving them at that point and then my uh my girl's always been into uh, horses, so two of the horses are actually hers from when they were young. Mm. Uh, she's had them since they were a year old, and those uh, those horses are now 24 and 20. I just got one for herself. That's um, she's 1,800 pounds, so she can hold my my body. So I, I, I love horses, man. I love their I love their spirit. I love I love being around them. It makes me feel calm, and and, and I just like the I like the atmosphere of the whole the whole idea of it basically yeah sure sure and i feel like horses were a big it should have been a big part of this world tour i feel like someone should have come in on a horse it would have been a big part of it you being fluent with horses i feel like you would have been able to do your job off the back of the horse so let's talk about that because a lot of fans <laughs> in the MMA the show, world, huh? yeah that would be amazing i mean a lot of M uh, fans in the <laughs> mma world they had their first introduction to you last week during the world tour with connor and floyd but i want to find out from you greg tell us how was the experience for you because it's something that the combat world sees very rarely happen. Right. It's unbelievable, man. Uh, I mean, first of all, this is, this is the biggest fight ever. And I think it'll be the biggest fight that'll ever happen in, in the future and everything. And I, I, I'm, I, me being a part of it, you know, I feel extremely blessed. And uh, uh, I don't know how many people can tell their friends and, and their family that they were on a stage with Conor McGregor and... Uh, and Floyd Mayweather, and I don't know how many people can tell their friends that, you know, they got into a verbal alter altercation with Connor. So, I mean, it's a great, it's a great experience. I had a lot of fun. Um, you know, I, I can't, I can't replace this experience with anything. Absolutely, we'll we'll definitely get to that and, and what exactly happened between you and Connor. But I want to ask you no because obviously, problem. obviously the the debate is who won the overall battle. You know, before the war goes down on August twenty sixth, we know you work for Floyd, but did you feel that Connor got to him in any of the stops? No, absolutely not. Not not a, not in a single not in a single bit. Floyd's been here for twenty one years. He's fought world champions. He's been on a world stage for so many years. This is not new to him. Connor, Connor's an excellent athlete. He's a even better promoter. I take my hat off to him. Um, he's done, he's done things in four years that people didn't even think were possible. So I got nothing negative to say in that aspect. Um, but in terms of getting in Floyd's head, impossible. Um, I believe the actual, the, the turning point of what what showed that he couldn't get in his head is at the point where he touched his head in London there. To me, that showed a sign of weakness um, in Connor because basically the touch, you're not supposed to be touching the other guy, obviously. And uh, I believe that touch was to try to bring something out of Floyd. And he was basically saying to me anyways, that I can't do it with words. I can't do it with actions. I need to try to do something else here. And even the touch didn't, you know, Floyd wasn't even paying attention. He was on his phone and, you know, he was just laughing at it, like just laughing. He was talking to other people while Connor was doing his bid. And uh, mm. I think that was really getting to Connor. What, what did you think when that touch happened? Because you were situated in an interesting position. You were kind of like on the side of the boxing ring, but obviously you were, you were on duty and you were ready to go. When you saw Connor go for that touch, was a part of you ready to jump in there in case anything broke out? 
No, no, I wasn't worried one bit. First of all, Floyd can handle himself. Second of all, um, uh, I, I know they're both professionals. Uh, you know, Connor's a professional. He might he might walk the line, but he he doesn't cross it. And I uh, I respect him for that. Um, Floyd the same, obviously. It's you know it's 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 part of the promotion, and they're both professional in, in, in that sense. And I wasn't worried one bit. Mm-hmm. And one of the big things about this tour was just how many stops there were. I mean, you had obviously LA, then you had Toronto, then you had Brooklyn, yeah. and then you had to go to the other side of the world all the way to London. I mean, I it, it, it would have been really, really grueling for both guys. We, we noticed, I mean, we spoke about it recently and how, how Connor looked like he was kind of wearing it. What was Floyd like behind the scenes, though? And did you notice him being affected at any point? Because we know he was smart. He wore the sunglasses in London. You couldn't really see his eyes. But backstage, behind the scenes, yeah. we know. We, we, did, did you know? Notice it was taking its toll a little bit on him. No, Floyd's character is just rock solid. Behind the scenes, we're just joking and laughing about our own, our own kind of inside stuff with TMT. He doesn't really talk about the tour at all until he gets there. Then he just turns it on. Floyd, like people don't know about Floyd, he's an extremely generous, kind-hearted guy, and he's a big joker. Um, but he's never, he's never intimidated. He's never scared. He's never worried. He's never, like I mean. For a guy who's been in, you know, 24, I think it's 24 uh, world championship fights. Like that's that's a huge world stage. Like I, like for myself, I would think I'd get nervous as hell going up on there. But he, he's always together. He's so rock solid with that. Like for me, I look I look at him. And I'm like, how how does he do this? So I wouldn't even be able to explain how he does it. But I can tell you that no, it absolutely doesn't. Uh, it absolutely doesn't get to him. He's he's stone cold in that sense, and and there's nothing that can get by him. Talk to us about the interaction between you and Connor during the world tour. Did it all kick off in Brooklyn, or was there some stuff behind the scenes that we never got to see even before Brooklyn that sort of kicked it all off? No, I, I saw Connor kind of looking over a few times and kind of mm. noticing Floyd's team. So maybe he was preparing to say something. I'm not sure. But he he hadn't for the first two, so I figured he's probably not gonna. He he probably wouldn't, um, you know, talk to Floyd's team. Like Floyd didn't talk to his team. It's kind of like they're on they're on the level that they're on. They're on the most elite level. So I, I'd imagine they would never want to talk to the teams like like in terms of like the levels that we're on. I'm not say not to discredit myself or anything, but but let's be realistic. These guys are these guys are elite athletes, and you know for the lack of a better expression, rich as hell now, like Connor rich as hell too after this fight. So, I mean, why would he be arguing with guys that are security or whatever it is? So I figured it wouldn't happen, but, uh, but it did in Brooklyn, basically, um, uh, Floyd said point to the easy work and we pointed at him and he started saying the tap out stuff. And I think I was getting to Connor. So he kind of drew his attention to that. And he, uh, he looked over at me and he said, and, uh, and the other guy, Ray, and he said, look at these two Jews heads. So I guess at that point, he probably had enough of it and he had to go at me. So, I, I mean, I, I, I thought it was great. So he looked at me, he said, look at these two Jews heads. And uh, and uh, and Floyd, uh, I can't remember what Floyd said after that. Floyd said something after that, so I think he walked away for a bit. And then he came back and said some stuff to me like, you're on juice and uh I said, and I told him right there, I said, no, never. I, uh, I said, I'm not. I said, I'll do a USADA test right now, and I'll bet you $100,000 that I'm not. And he said, uh, and he said, yeah, right, yeah, right. I said, I'll take it right now. I'll take the blood right after the show. And um, it kind of got him like, oh, no way. And he said, this is, uh, I think he said something along the lines, like, this is a real body or something. <laughs> and then I just told him, uh, I said, you know what, when you're standing next to me, I said, put on a shirt because you're embarrassing yourself standing next to me. I figured it would just razz him up a little bit. <laughs> I thought it was funny. But, you know, in no, shape, no way, shape, or form am I sitting up there mad. I explain it like this. I explain it like, for you guys in Australia love that, uh, what is it, that ru- Australian rugby? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Over yeah. There, right? Mm-hmm. I've heard about all, all of that. So let's say you and your best friend are watching a, are watching an Australian rugby game. You like one team, your best friend likes the other. You guys are going to swear at each other, throw chips at each other, and do whatever you do while you're sitting there. <laughs> it, you, you, you don't, you don't want to 
bash your other friend's head in, but you know, you're, you're going to talk that shit. So I, I kind of explain it like that. Like it's a sport. This is like one of my best friends about to fight Conor McGregor. So I'm sitting up there and my, you know, my, my heart pounds and my blood gets going and I'm talking and I talked that he came up to me and kind of initiated. So I, I went in and I talked that shit, but you know, people, people throw it out of kind of go, oh, I thought you were going to throw him off the stage or Connor is going to knock you out. And I'm like, come on guys, come on. You know, they, they just push it to another level. Mm. It's just some shit talking. It's, it, it's fun. It's, it's good for promotion, you know? And, uh, and it's not, it's not on the level where people are going to kill each other. Sure, sure. And I mean, I think a lot of people were fascinated with it because uh, Conor McGregor's team came over. A guy called Dylan Dennis, who's now a Bellator fighter, his jiu-jitsu guy. Um, Adam Lobov was there. Owen Roddy was there. Did, did, you was... Know who, did you know who these guys were? And how, how was your relationship no. with those guys? Was there, was there, a so chance, was there off, any back and forth with those guys? Not really. I'm a, I, I'm a big MMA fan. I love MMA, uh, MMA fighting. I'm actually, I watch... I watch pretty much all the UFCs. I love it. Um, but I, I didn't recognize those guys. I think they said one of them was a UFC guy and the others are trying to get in the UFC or something. I'm not sure. But there's the, 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 uh, the blonde guy. There was, a, uh, there was another shorter guy that kind of looked mm. like he was a Russian dude or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I was told that, yeah, they're all, they're all fighters and, and stuff like that. But, I mean... Um, no, I didn't, I didn't really know exactly who they were or where they fight and stuff like that. So I, I, I'm sure, I'm sure I knew that, uh, Connor hangs out with all MMA guys. And I think that someone said they were all part of his training team or something, if that's correct. Yeah. Well, ba basically you had a train, you had two training partners and Owen Roddy is one <laughs> of his coaches. I, I'm just curious because one of the, one of the more, I guess, interesting moments and one of the moments where it, it, it did seem to obviously frustrate Conor McGregor and his team was when Floyd said, uh, form Voltron. Talk to us about w what exactly <laughs> that was. First of all, where, where did the name come from? And is that something that's been practiced before? Is this a regular sort of, I guess, arsenal that, that you and, and the rest of the security team are, are well familiar of uh, with, or is, is this something that you guys sort of did for this tour? What's what's the story there? I, I guess it was just a spur of the moment thing. Um, he's he's mentioned Voltron before. We just joked around about it amongst ourselves and stuff like that. That was like the first time he said it, like in a in a public type display like what, that. So, what, what what were the um, jokes, Greg? Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. Curious when you guys are sort of you know shooting the shit backstage. So Vol where did so Voltron's Voltron come that, from? Voltron's that cartoon uh, from back in the day. It's, it look he looks like a transformer where a whole bunch of them come together and, and build this big. Uh, and build the big robot that yeah. kicks ass. Mm -hmm. So that's where that came from. But uh, basically when he said form Voltron, it's just us getting in a, a single file kind of, not single file, sorry, just like a, a line. We were just like shoulder to shoulder line. We weren't trying to like, like what people think. We weren't trying to like attack on or anything. That, that was, we're not trying to do that. We were mm -hmm. just standing in a line and we we're just going to stand there. And I guess his guys came in right away, which I mean, as they should, we would have done the same thing. Uh, they came in right away and that's when it became kind of a little scuffle and pushing back and forth and stuff like that. And a little shit talking back and forth, but you know, they're, they're at the end of the day, they're professionals and they're doing their job. I don't blame them for what they did at all. Cause we would have done the same thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, obviously Conor McGregor targeted some other people, uh, Showtime, uh, you know, mon the money team, uh, Steven Espinosa, for example, was a casualty of the yeah. trash talk. <laughs> what, did, what did you think about all that? What did you think about Conor sort of focusing uh, on Steven? Because Steven honestly, looked like he, he was, uh, he was, Steven looked like he was pretty bothered by the whole thing. Steve, first of all, Steven's a great guy. He's always treated me with a ton of respect. He's a very humble down to earth guy. I like him a lot. Um, in terms of the whole show itself, I loved it. it. Was it was just funny? I was I was laughing. I was laughing at every. I was laughing when he was making fun of me. I, it, it was just it was good. He puts on a good show. I, I, I will say that uh, Connor puts on a good show, and he he talks a lot of funny funny shit, and, and it's it, it's fun to listen to. It's fun to be a part of. Talk to us, talk to us, Greg, about um. Obviously, you know, we only really saw your job during the presses and and whatever was uh, you know, p whatever videos were put online. But what was it like going yeah. through that whole week, being security, having to keep Floyd Mayweather safe? Were there any interesting parts? I mean, you'd be seeing fans and people from you know essentially all over the world. What what was that like? And uh, were, were there any interesting moments for you as a sort of as a, as a security guy? Yeah, in terms of what we do, why like wise, I would say. Uh, everything is pretty much the same, but there is one thing that I took note to was the fact that 
the the celebrity in Floyd Mayweather was heightened by 10 times. Like everywhere we go, it's, it's on a new level. I thought I had seen everything and I was, I was wrong. And, um, I think these two guys are the most famous guys on this planet right now. And I've been part of that and I've seen it and the crowds are going crazy. And, and, and there's hundreds, thousands of people like crowding around in the New York streets or in London. It, 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 it's unbelievable. It's a nice, uh, it's a nice thing to see. And I thought that, uh, I thought it couldn't get any bigger. And, and you know what? It, it, it did. <laughs> It did. Mm. I mean, uh, there would be a lot of obstacles for you in those situations. Lots of people rushing up, trying to get photos. Trying yeah. Also, people, obviously, who aren't fans of Floyd, trying to get close. Who knows? Drunk people, violent people. Did you? What was your biggest obstacle to keeping Floyd safe? And did you have any close calls with any crazy fans trying to, I, I suppose, attack him or get too close? Yeah. No, not really. I mean, we're just uh, the crowds. You know, the crowds, the bigger the crowds are, the more intense they are, the heavier they are to kind of keep back. Because, I mean, you can imagine you have three, four hundred people pushing forward that are pulled back. But, you know, we've, we've, uh, um, we've been doing it for so long now that uh, we know exactly how to come up and, uh, and, and, and keep the crowds back. But other than that, no, they, they were a little heavier to hold back. But, you know, um, it's nothing that we haven't done before, basically. And I'm, I'm just curious. There's this video going around, Greg, where this guy, uh, basically a guy, I believe, from, from London or, or England, uh, he basically got these passes, he photocopied them, and he kind of made his way into Floyd's entourage. He was or has, he was part of Conor McGregor's, but he, he snuck in. He had zero credentials, just a guy off the streets, but, yeah. I mean, you know, dressed or whatever. Did, did you see that? And, and what was your that. reaction? Did you have a bit yeah, of a laugh I, about that? Yeah, well... The, the security in London um, out there, I mean, there was no police out there and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, that would be on them for getting them in. But uh, um, but some, I, I think I saw the part where he was walking by our dressing room. That's He definitely didn't try to walk in our dress because we wouldn't, no matter if you have credentials or not, that, that's the last line of defense is to get into to our dressing room. That would never have happened. So mm. I'm not sure how he got in or um, how they let him in, but... I mean, they might have to heighten their security. That doesn't happen in Vegas because everything's uh, like barcoded or whatever they call it. And it's got like holograms on it and stuff. You can't mm. you can't do that in, in Vegas. The, the, the security is just ridiculous out here. And I don't think anyone would be crazy enough to try. So he must have seen a weakness in the system out there and been able to uh, been able to uh, to get in. So, I mean, years and years of guarding Floyd, you guys have a very, very close friendship and relationship. And in, in all those years yeah. of guarding him, have you ever had any close calls? Has anything ever happened? Have you ever ever had a close <laughs> call story that you can share with us? <laughs> the million dollar question, huh? Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I've never stumped on a question, but I'd, uh, uh, close calls wide, like in terms of like, fighting or stuff like, like stuff like that or people attacking him you say yeah like people people you know getting too close to him yeah. or trying to be violent or you being there at the right moment to stop something you know horrible from happening i mean we've had a couple of things i won't get into it but 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 it's always professionally taken care of handled and you know uh we do it to the best of our ability uh but in terms of people attacking him you know he gets a lot of respect i mean you see a lot of people um say things about him maybe on the internet or or on tv but when they see him in person it's always can i get a picture i'm a huge fan and, and it's always kind of like that it's never really uh i hate you or let me like try to get you and hit you or something so i mean fans are usually respectful in person and and it's uh it's actually it, it, it's good to see that i, I don't want to um see a lot of fans trying to attack him or anything but they're, they're they're usually very respectful to be honest with you fans with him and they they actually have a lot of love for him so mm. and, and you're, you're obviously a big guy greg yourself and i mean listening to you now you sound like one of the most uh, you know pleasant human beings around and obviously you've got horses as well <laughs> so what's what's not to like but yeah. do, you, do you practice any martial arts what do you use if you situate if you know if a situation breaks out yeah i mean i'm, I'm familiar with martial arts i did uh I'm originally from Toronto, Canada, um, and uh, I used to uh, train out there. I used to do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu with uh, with uh, my buddy out there, and uh, and wrestling as well. And he uh, he trained at a very high level. He was close to pro, so I was with him for about five years. We were training, 
and then uh, out here in Vegas, I keep uh, I keep my skills going with a couple of the guys. Um, but in terms of a pro level <clears throat> uh, MMA guy or you know uh, one of those guys, I won't claim to be that at all. I have my own kind of little skill set. Uh, I've done karate in the past. I've done. Uh, I grew up playing hockey my whole life. I've been. I've never been a stranger to fighting. So, I mean, but uh, the 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 best thing is ability to be able to use your words and not have to get in the situation. So, so security. What people don't understand a lot of times are like, what do you have to do? Who? I bet you beat up a bunch of people. That's not what you're trying to do. You're trying to keep. You're trying to keep your client, and in my case, my friend, one of my best friends, Floyd Mayweather, out of you know legal problems, out of problems in general. And my thing is, you know, how you doing, guys? Um, uh, what happened? Why are you angry? Or something like that. And I, I'd rather dissipate a situation than escalate. That's, that's that's my forte. I'm a calm, cool, collective guy. On the stage, I might not have looked like that. I think they got a couple of pictures where I look like a friggin', I look like some kind of monster. But uh, but uh, it, it was great. That's all in fun. And uh, uh, but yeah, like in my regular life, I I have like you know real life things. I don't want to you know I don't want to cause problems or cause fights with with people. So in in my line of work, the best thing to do we call it the mouthpiece. Your mouthpiece is your best is your best uh, asset. Well, Greg, as we wrap up, I suppose the other million-dollar question is how this fight plays out. You know, we've seen what Conor McGregor can do in the world of MMA. We know Floyd Mayweather is one of the best boxers of all time, and defensively, he he looks amazing. But the questions are there that people are wondering. At 40 years old, with his hands being damaged and uh, some time away from boxing, can he beat Conor McGregor? What What is your prediction here? How do you see this fight going? I mean, you would have seen Floyd Mayweather training for this one. How's he looking? How do you think this fight will go? Well, he looks great. He always looks great. He's always in great shape. Uh, he's a he's a freak of nature when it comes to um, when it comes to that. Uh, in terms of the prediction, I, I don't know. We'd have to just see. I mean, he's he is getting older. He's had two years off. Um, Connor's a tough guy. Connor's a tough guy. I don't know how he boxes. I know there's a lot of stuff going around and people talking shit about Connor, but. Uh, I mean, I'm the type of guy, so if I don't see it, I don't believe it. So I can't really take what people say. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, his stand-up skills are great. I've seen Connor in the, in the octagon, and he, he can take a million punches, and he can give a million punches. So, I mean, we'll just have to see. I know Floyd's, Floyd has a very strong chin, so I'm sure there's going to be a couple exchanges going back between them. And I think it'll be a very entertaining fight because I think that Connor will take the fight to Floyd. Floyd will showcase his defensive skills, and I believe he'll showcase some of his offensive skills as well. Um, being this whole thing, I think that uh, Pretty Boy is, is, is back, and I think he's back for one last run, and he might uh, put that on showcase in the ring. So in terms of prediction of the outcome of the fight, Floyd wins, of course, um, but I don't know how. Um, can he stop him? Maybe. Will he win in a decision? 100% if it goes to decision. Um, I'd like to see him put on a good show. That's what I'd like to see, see happen. I'd like the fans to be able to come out of this one and say it was a great show and, uh, and they were happy and it was money well spent. And uh, it can silence all the people that say that this is uh, like a, a bullshit fight, but it's not. I think it's amazing and the world needs this fight. This fight, the boxing fans need this fight. I can't wait. Well, there you go, guys. The fight is August 26th. Floyd Mayweather versus Conor McGregor. Greg, we hope it's nice and easy and cruisy for you. We hope the next few weeks are, are, are nice and easy. And obviously, on August 26th, when uh, the world will be watching, and obviously a lot of fans will be there, it's nice and cruisy for you. And uh, we appreciate you jumping on. I think, like you mentioned, the photos of you and what people saw at the press conference, I think people listening to you now, they'll realize what an incredibly nice, humble, just all-around good guy you are. So we appreciate your time. Thank we know you. it's a crazy schedule. And thank uh, Thank you so much for jumping on with us. Appreciate the words, guys. Uh, thank you for having me on.